It was close to midnight on a cold January night when I first heard the knock at my door. I'd been dozing on the couch, lulled by the pops and crackles of the fireplace. The sound jolted me upright, heart already pounding. Who could be knocking at this hour? We were snowed in here on the farm, the driveway buried under a foot of powder. No one should be out in this kind of weather. The knock came again, this time more insistent. I felt a chill run down my spine as I peered through the frosted glass of the front door. The porch light cast an eerie glow on the snow-covered steps, but no silhouette appeared. Who's there? I called out, my voice echoing in the stillness of the night. No reply came. I checked the doorbell camera on my phone. The front step stood empty, not even a footprint disturbing the smooth blanket of white. Yet the knocking continued, steady and rhythmic. as if an invisible hand wrapped against the wood. Inside, the house creaked and settled around me. I pulled my sweater tightly around myself, suddenly aware of how isolated I was on this remote farmhouse property, how easy it would be for someone or something to approach unseen on a night like this. Ignoring the knocking, I turned away from the door and headed upstairs. But then came a new sound, the distinct click of the door handle being turned. My heart seized in my chest. I stood frozen, listening intently. Silence. Had I imagined it? I crept back and tested the handle. Locked tight, relief washed over me, just my mind playing tricks, I told myself. I retreated to the bedroom and scanned the room, wishing I had something to defend myself with. Why had I never bought that handgun from the pawn shop in town? Out here, so far from help, it couldn't hurt to have some protection, but it was too late for regrets now. As I climbed into bed, I couldn't ignore the feeling of unseen eyes watching me from the darkness outside, waiting for me to let down my guard. Exhausted, I finally drifted off to sleep. Sometime later, I awoke with a start. The silence of the house felt heavy, oppressive. Then I heard it, a faint creak on the stairs, the soft tread of footsteps climbing towards me. My blood turned to ice. Someone was inside the house. I sat upright in bed, every muscle tense. The footsteps grew louder, closer. My mind raced through options. Should I grab some type of weapon and confront the intruder? Try to escape through the window? Play dead and hope they left me alone? Before I could decide, the door to my bedroom slowly swung open. The hallway light framed a silhouette in the doorway, tall, broad-shouldered, unmistakably male. I opened my mouth to scream, but no sound came out. The figure stepped into the room, features still obscured by shadow. He moved with a casual, unhurried pace that terrified me even more. He was taking his time, relishing this moment. When he spoke, his voice was strained. Mother, I finally found you. It's time to come home. He clearly had me confused for someone else. I struggled against his surprising strength as he dragged me from bed. At the top of the stairs, I broke free and bolted, nearly tumbling down in my panic. His agonized voice called after me, Don't leave me again. Not again. Heavy footsteps pursued me. I raced outside into the biting cold. My feet sank deep into the snow as I ran for the road. The sound of his steps behind drove me forward despite the chill seeping into my bones. I stumbled and fell to my knees. As my vision blurred, reality faded. I was a lost little girl pleading for her mother. Then everything went black. I awoke some time later, face still pressed into the icy snow. Disoriented, I lifted my head and squinted at the flashing lights nearby. Two figures in uniforms approached. They said they were from the psychiatric hospital sent to retrieve their escaped patient. It was over. Help had found me too late, but not too late. The nightmare was finally over. I was safe. Shivering uncontrollably, I took the hand extended to help me up. My rescuer wrapped a coarse emergency blanket around my shoulders and led me to the waiting ambulance. As the doors closed and the vehicle began moving, I leaned back and let the tears flow. Relief poured out of me. At the hospital, they kept me overnight for observation. Exhaustion eventually won out over the adrenaline still pumping through my system. I drifted off into a dreamless sleep, feeling truly at peace for the first time since the knock on the door. 
The next morning, I awoke to find the local sheriff at my bedside waiting to take my statement. As I recounted the events of last night, he filled in some of the missing pieces for me. Apparently, before I passed out, I had hit him in the head with a rock as they found him at my feet next to a bloody rock. The sheriff then patted my shoulder, seeing my distress. You're safe now, he repeated. He won't hurt anyone else. 